I'm not sure if we designed this. This is this was just a fraud of a project. This was this wasn't our best best project to be honest. This was probably my worst project throughout university. <laughs> yeah, awful. This is an awful iteration. We thought of this idea and just we just rolled with it, and that's pretty much what happened in first year. Okay, ladies and gents, welcome back to a brand new video. Before we dive into the video, if you could please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe, that'd be much, much appreciated. So yes, welcome back. We've got a bit of <laughs> inception going on. Hello there. So today we're gonna to be reacting to my first year architecture portfolio. So I haven't actually shown you any of my first year work, maybe in obviously deadline day videos and those kinds of things, you might have seen a snippet of my work and I might have talked through a couple of bits. But today I'm gonna to be running through my entire first year work, portfolio one and portfolio two with you guys. So my first year work was broken down into six projects, three projects for portfolio one and three projects for portfolio two. And basically the final outcome of every single project was to have A2 panels which we'd then pin up on a board and present in front of um, our peers and our tutors or external people etc. And then we'd put those A2 pieces of paper into a big kind of A2 folder and that's kind of the format of our portfolio. So if you're thinking why they're all quite crammed and there's a lot of information on them, that is because they're all A2 pieces of paper. So keep that in mind. Let's dive into it. So the first project of the year, um, obviously you can imagine going into architecture school, you didn't have an absolute clue. Well, I personally didn't have a clue about anything to do with architecture. I went in completely blind. I didn't do any research or anything. I didn't know anything, <laughs> pretty much. And obviously the first few projects of university is break, pretty much just breaking you in and getting you to understand the basics of architecture, understand scaling, understand different types of drawings, obviously elevations, plans, sections, those kind of things. And that's pretty much what we did for the first kind of few months of my university experience. So project number one was pretty much looking at a precedent study and breaking down that precedent study, trying to understand it through sketches and diagrams and those kinds of things. And I actually thought this was a pretty successful first project for first year to be honest. When you look at this, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. You look at this and you think that is a really good sketch. I remember the person that did that. I remember when he, when he gave it in, when he came in one day and we were like, no way have you sketched that. That is actually unreal. Like that is like, that's not first year level. And when he came in and, and did that, I thought, right, I've got some, <laughs> I've got some sketching skills to build up here because my sketching skills are not quite up to this level. I did this kind of drawing down here, this little study drawing. I did this elevation over here and I actually wanted to do the panel because I had a little bit of skills in Photoshop. I wanted to put the panel together. And I thought, obviously this project is falling water by Frank Lloyd Wright. If you're all architect students, surely you'd know this project. Well, I'd, I'd hope so anyway. And I thought, Imagine having water falling down the page because this is falling water. So that's literally what I did here. As you can see, I've got water falling down the page, which I think works pretty well. And I look back at this and I think, that is a decent first project at university, to be honest. Like, I'm pretty pretty surprised. But I think it just it just looked nice. And obviously everything's black and white with the sketches with the blue coming down the page. Diving into project number two, equilibrium section. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but it sounded cool and I think we used it even though it didn't make any sense whatsoever. And I think this project briefed us to basically create something, create a device that would basically alter the atmosphere and the experience within a space. So we, <laughs> we basically, obviously all of us, when we go to university, we all go into an elevator. And we felt that if we could design something or create something that would basically alter the experience within an elevator. Because as you guys know, if you're in an, ele in an elevator, it's normally quite awkward. Everyone's kind of stood to the edges. No one's saying anything. So we thought, why don't we design something that would cause people to interact more and kind of have just a bit a bit more interaction within an elevator. And obviously you've got that elevator kind of music and it's all a bit awkward. So <laughs> I'm not sure if we designed this. This is this was just a fraud of a project. <laughs> this was this wasn't our best best project, to be honest. This was probably my worst project throughout university. But you know what? It was a bit of fun and it was funny and we laughed about it and it was it was good fun. We basically went to Argos and bought two blow-up beds <laughs> and then wrapped it in PVC, this red PVC stuff, and put it pretty much just in an elevator, which would mean that when someone stepped foot in an elevator, they'd obviously be off balance, um, which causes them to interact with someone or laugh about something and be a little bit less awkward. And that was pretty much it. And as you can see here, the design here, our initial sketches, there wasn't really much to it. It was pretty much li literally just an Argos blow up bed that we just whacked in an elevator. And we actually, one of the briefs was to put together a, kind of like a promotional video. <laughs> now watch this.
Oh, well, this is awkward. Let's liven up a little bit. Me and Chris running in. <laughs> now let's see how they react to a change in environment. Mm. I this for Do you notice oh. their emotions have changed? Their body language have changed and they are now interacting with each other. That was the video, we put that together, I thought it was funny, I thought it was a bit of, it was a bit of fun. Project number three, I think this is the first project where we actually went through the process of doing site analysis, understanding a client and actually designing something. So my site was based in Birmingham um, and obviously Birmingham is quite renowned for um, homelessness and so I decided to create something for the homeless and we had this site which was quite busy and there's a lot of people walking through it. So I thought if we could have like a, this kind of epicenter for homeless people, I thought that would be quite a good design for my, my first kind of design project. So obviously doing a lot of site analysis, looking at mobile kind of burger vans and those kind of things, what could be kind of like this, this interception point in this busy area where people could pick up food or get gain knowledge about something. Inspiration, <laughs> this was a site plan. Beautiful, shows so much context. Not Got a mushroom over here. <laughs> Yeah, awful. These are some awful iteration. To be honest, I just developed my design pretty quickly. There wasn't many design stages behind it. I just saw, thought of this idea and just we just rolled with it. And that's pretty much what happened in first year. And then this is the final design. This is the epicenter, well, which I thought was a decent name. And it's basically this intervention in this busy street where homeless people could come get some food or kind of speak to someone. Um, and ask for like job advice and those kinds of things. So it was just this little design which I thought was fairly successful as a first year. Um, looking at obviously lighting and I had these kind of lighting slits and I've actually got the model for this here. Now look at this. I was pretty happy with this. Oh, roof comes off. Bingo. Not bad. And then this was just circulation, looking at some more detailed stuff. And as you can see at the bottom here, I put together a sketchup model because I thought so far in first year, I hadn't done anything on computer. Everything was hand drawn. I thought if I put some something where I've used a computer and a software, maybe we'd get some extra marks. Didn't work, they didn't like it. They wanted everything to be hand, hand drawn, which is fair enough. Obviously, I, I highly encourage everyone that's in first year to do everything by hand drawn, because you need to kind of learn and develop the basics of architecture. Portfolio number two, however, was much, much better. Let's have a look at this. So, as you can see here, Still doing everything hand, hand drawn, everything's hand sketched. This project was basically looking at Spaghetti Junction. If anyone's from Birmingham or knows Birmingham, you'd know that Spaghetti Junction is quite famous for its, its traffic and it's quite confusing nature. And so I decided to, <laughs> to have the client Jason Bourne because there was basically these intersections of roads and I thought there was these kind of like hiding points underneath them. Um, so I thought someone like Jason Bourne or James Bond would be kind of like this good client for these kind of tight and um, kind of hidden spaces. So this was site analysis. I did this everything with a pro marker. I remember in first year I did everything with a pro marker and everything with a pen and pencil. Precedent studies. Um, so I was basically thinking of designing this kind of hammock or this thing that would hang from um, the spaghetti junction where basically Jason Bourne would go if he's running away from a mission or he's running away from um, the bad guy. And that was pretty much the idea. There's not really much to it, to be honest. <laughs> These are some design developments, um, just sketches showing how this thing would kind of hang from the spaghetti junction, how it'd be out of sight with these vehicles. And this was the final design. And once, you, once again, you can see it's all sketched. I did this all by a pro marker. And here's Jason Bourne <laughs> climbing up into his hammock that's hanging from the spaghetti junction. A little exploded axonometric there, some internal visuals and materials, a little model. Spaghetti Junction model, as you can see here, these kind of bonkers roads crossing over each other. And on to the next project, and I think this was a really good project personally for me in first year, I really, really enjoyed this. I think the important thing is, and I always tell this to people, that the most important thing is, is to make sure you're enjoying your projects and tailor things to things that you enjoy and some of your hobbies, and, and I think you'll find it, you'll get a lot more motivated and you'll have a lot more passion towards the project. And you enjoy it a lot more if you tailor it to something that you're kind of interested in. So I remember this project, I bent the rules a little bit. I was a little bit naughty with this one. And we all basically got given each kind of um, kind of workshop people. So you'd have, you'd have a, a screen printer, um, you'd have an artist and those kinds of things. So I basically had a screen printer and I thought, how can I make it? 
excuse me. <laughs> Little dog's having a scratch. So I thought, how could I tailor a screen printer to something that I'm interested in, something that I enjoy? And I thought, Gymshark. So Ben Francis is the owner of Gymshark. He basically created and started Gymshark from screen printing in his conservatory at his home in Birmingham. These were kind of showing the processes of screen printing and the equipment that they'd need. This was a site analysis, once again, using um, pens, pencils, and um, a lot of pro markers, once again. A lot of design iteration, I think. Um, this is when I actually started to think about spatial layouts and they encourage a lot more of this kind of stuff and this was really important. And then the final design, so elevation here, it was next to a pub, so I basically designed it to have the same um, external features as the pub, so it would kind of link in and it wouldn't be out of context. And the building was basically a home for Ben Francis, a gym for Ben Francis, a workshop for screen prints and those kinds of things. So I basically just tied in everything that I enjoyed and basically just introduced it into my, my first year projects. This was the floor plan here. I mean, it's not the best, as you can see, I'm still doing everything by hand. Everything was sketched. Now, honestly, doing these floor plans by hand was the most, the most painful thing to ever do because obviously once you've drawn something and once you've drawn a line wrong, you have to rub it out and redraw it. If you go into a, a review and they say, oh, I think you should change this, you then have to go completely redraw the floor plan again, trace over, honestly, it's tedious. So my piece of advice is don't do floor plans by hand, <laughs> maybe in obviously development stages, but when it comes to a final design, I'd highly recommend doing it in CAD or something just, just, to, save, just to save a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety. And I think it's just the best thing to do. Some internal visuals, as you can see, it's very kind of simple, very minimal. And I thought these were quite effective in showing the kind of environment and the, the kind of what is actually going on in these spaces. Exploded axon on the metric and then just a, a final model um, which final models I always always left to literally the last minute final the models were, were something that I would do if I've got the final hand in the following day and I was finishing off all my panels and all my work and all the designs up till about probably two o'clock in the morning and then that's when I'd start putting together my final model and that was pretty much the first year in a nutshell. And finally, moving on to project six, I think this was my best project of the year. Obviously, hopefully, if you're going through first year, you'd want to probably try and make it so every project's getting better. Obviously, you're learning more things, you're learning different ways of representing work. Project number six, my client was basically children and parents from the Abbey Junior School because there was a school right next to the park. And I thought if I could create kind of like an after school club, basically for the kids, not going into too much detail on how to break down uh, the precedent studies obviously in second and third year you obviously critically analyze the precedent studies here you can see i'm just literally just putting them on a page and just sketching them and just saying that i looked at this and looked at that site analysis i did this entirely by hand by <laughs> by pencil <sighs> oh my word and as you can see here i drew every single individual house and every single individual everything um, and then this was kind of like crayons and i think it looks quite i think it looks quite good but to be honest, it took way too much time and I shouldn't have spent too much time on doing a kind of site plan. Site section showing the kind of slope of the site. And so I basically decided to design the space that would basically rep replicate a tree, <laughs> a tree stump. So the floor plan would be kind of like the circular space and it'd kind of twirl around and the spaces would twirl around, which would kind of be like a tree stump, basically. That was pretty much the, the idea of the design. Not too much design development, as you can see. I kind of just went straight into it. And then this was the floor plan. All these spaces, because of the slant of the, of the hill, um, you kind of move through the spaces and you, you kind of go into these kind of different learning spaces. Um, and I think these are kind of like casual kind of teaching environments because it's obviously like an after school club. And then interior visuals and exterior visuals. This is obviously when I started using Photoshop to put together visuals because obviously everything before was kind of hand drawn. Um, I remember I spent a lot of time on this and I was pretty happy with this, kind of like a collage-y, photo montage -y thing. So you come in here and as you can see the, the slope of the hill and the site section responding to the context. You've then got the other site section which you can see your cafes on the top. And then some more visuals, um, models, and those kinds of things. And then this was the first time I actually looked at kind of technical details and started to understand how the actual building could be constructed. Because obviously in first year, you're in fancy land. <laughs> you're designing things that will never ever be able to get built. And that's it. That is my first year work done. Obviously, this is the entire design studio. Obviously, when you go through first year, you're learning the basics of architecture and design. You're learning the basics of how to even cope with it all. Definitely just spend some time learning the basics, using a hand, using a hand, <laughs> you'd hope to use a hand, 
using your hand with a pen and pencil on some tracing paper with a sketchbook and try and keep things fairly simple and fairly basic um, just to build up your knowledge of architecture and understanding of architecture and design and yeah that is a wrap that is my my portfolio for my first year i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it gives you a bit of an insight into my work for our first year and yeah thank you so much for watching the video guys so once again if you enjoyed this video please hit that thumbs up button and once again please subscribe that'd be much much appreciated and yeah that's gonna be a wrap thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time peace peace